Continuing from our previous lecture, in this video, I'm going to teach you more about additional aspects of aqueous equilibrium. More specifically, I'm going to teach you about acid-base titrations. Are you ready? Here we go. In an acid-base titration, a solution containing a known amount of base is slowly added to an unknown amount of acid, or vice versa. A color change indicator is usually added so that the color of the solution changes as soon as you reach the equivalence point which is the point at which the amounts of acid and base are equal. Now, because you know the amount of base you've added, you can then calculate the previously unknown amount of acid that was present. To illustrate this more clearly, I'm going to take you to a separate YouTube video that shows this. I'll place a link to that here that you're welcome to click if you want to watch it in a separate window. A titration is a controlled acid-base neutralization reaction. 20 milliliters of hydrochloric acid of an unknown molarity is added to a flask. Two drops of indicator dye are added to the acidic solution. This indicator dye is clear in acidic solution and pink in basic solution. The burette is filled with a sodium hydroxide solution of known strength and an initial reading is taken. The base is added to the acidic solution until the solution stays a slightly pink color. At this endpoint, a final reading is taken. The moles of base added equal the moles of acid present. This same reaction can be followed using a pH meter instead of an indicator dye. Initially, the pH changes very little as base is added. Suddenly, the pH changes rapidly as the endpoint passes. The solution quickly becomes very basic, and again, the pH changes very little. The end point occurs at this middle point on the curve. Did that make sense? Good. Let me teach you some other details about this. So if you don't have a color changing indicator, you can get by by just inserting a pH meter into your unknown solution and then taking readings to generate something called a titration curve, which can then be used to determine your equivalence point. Once again, the equivalence point is the point at which the amounts of acid and base are equal and have neutralized each other as per a standard or generic neutralization reaction like the one shown here, where HA is the acid, MOH is a metal hydroxide base, and MA is a salt product. MA, the salty byproduct that is not appropriate for minors. All right, let's take a look at some actual pictures of real titration curves. This is what a titration curve looks like when you're titrating a strong acid with a strong base. Please, please know that because you're beginning with a strong acid, you're going to start at a very, very low pH, below two. As you add strong base, the strong base's hydroxide source neutralizes the strong acid's H plus or hydronium source. Gradually, the pH starts to increase. Do, 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 do. Right as you get to this point, this pH starts jumping dramatically, and you get to a location right in the middle, which the amount of moles of base and acid that have been added together are equal. After that, the pH continues to rise as more strong base is added until you get up to a strong base pH above 12. This is a titration curve for a strong base being titrated with a strong acid, much like the previous curve, but in reverse. Because you're starting with a strong base, the initial pH should be very high, above 12. As we add strong acid, the pH gradually drops until it reaches a point where it starts dropping dramatically. Right dead center in the middle of that is the equivalence point, the point at which the number of moles you have added equals the number of moles of base that were already present. The pH then continues to descend until you get down to low pH below 2, at which mostly strong acid is dominating. This is a titration curve for a weak acid with a strong base. I want you to notice the subtle differences between this titration curve and the one that involved a strong acid with a strong base. Note foremost that the pH is not as low as it is with a strong acid because you're dealing with a weak acid. This pH is a little bit above two. You should also notice that when titrating a weak acid with a strong base, you have a slight uptick curve like this. That is, it kind of looks like an inflection point and then gradually it inflects back the other way. In other words, I have kind of a frowny face until somewhere in the middle, at which I now have a smiley face. Just as with the strong acid with the strong base, I have an equivalence point right in the middle. After that point, of course, the pH continues to increase until I get up to strong base pH above 12. 
that takes us to a great question. The reason I ask this question is because I've seen questions like this on standardized exams. Curve A is a titration curve of a blank with a blank. Curve B is a titration curve of a blank with a blank. Now I invite you to use the information that I just presented, pause this video, and then see if you can answer this on your own. Then if you like, you can hit play, and I will answer it for you. Here are the answers. As we look at titration curve A, you'll notice that there is an inflection point. That is, it goes from concave down, a frowny face, to concave up, a smiley face. You'll also notice that the initial pH is a little bit higher than 2. That's indicative of a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. Another indicator of that is the fact that I accidentally left the title on this diagram right across the top. This curve is a titration of a weak acid with a strong base. The titration curve over here does not have any numerical markings on the y-axis, so we don't know exactly what pH it begins at. However, it obviously begins at a low or acidic pH. Furthermore, you do not see any inflection curve that is going from a frowny face concave down to a smiley face concave up right here at the beginning half, as we see with a weak acid. So this is a titration curve of a strong acid with a strong base. For you, my students, I demand and require and beg you to have the ability to distinguish between these different kinds of titration curves just by looking at their appearance. We'll now go on. We can use titration data to calculate pH at different times during our titration. The way this is done varies depending upon whether you're titrating a strong acid with a strong base, a weak acid with a weak base, or a strong base with a strong acid. If we're titrating a strong acid with a strong base, the pH calculation is divided into four stages. Stage one, the initial pH, that is where no base has been added yet. At stage one, where I've got just strong acid and no strong base added whatsoever, the pH of the solution is calculated directly from the initial concentration of the strong acid. For a solution of 0.1 molar HA, for example, because it's a strong acid, it will dissolve completely and release 0.1 molar equivalents of H+. Therefore, the pH is going to be equal to negative log of that number, which is 1. The second stage is between the initial pH and the equivalence point. As you add more and more strong base, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, for instance, the pH increases slowly at first and then rapidly as we approach the equivalence point. The pH before the equivalence point is calculated from the excess amount of acid that hasn't been neutralized. And I'll show you an example of that later on. Stage three is at the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, an equal number of moles of base and acid have been reacted together, leaving only a solution of their salt. The salt, by the way, doesn't affect pH whatsoever. So the pH of the solution at this point is 7, at least when you're titrating a strong acid with a strong base. Now at stage 4, after the equivalence point. Beyond the equivalence point, the pH of the solution is calculated from the excess hydroxide in that solution. And I'll show you an example of that later on. Speaking of which, here is one. 20 milliliter sample 0.2 molar HBr is titrated with 0.2 molar NaOH. Calculate the pH of the solution after the following volumes of base have been added, 15 mils and 35 mils. I invite you, if you feel comfortable, to attempt this on your own. And then if you wish, you could click a link here to a separate video, which I'll show you how to do it on the board. And here's another one. How many milliliters of 0.085 molar NaOH are required to titrate 25 milliliters of 0.072 molar HBr to the equivalence point. Once again, if you like, you can attempt this on your own and then click the link here to a separate video in which I show you how to do it on the board. That takes us to the end of this video. Please stay tuned to the next one in which I'll continue teaching you more about additional aspects of aqueous equilibrium. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.